Hey everybody, it's Jordan Elizabeth Galbert with the Bold and Blonde Update. And today I'm with the one and only Jeffrey Cantor, who you guys may know from Daredevil among so many other amazing movies. Jeff, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. How are things in Florida? Oh yes, sunny, isolated. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, they're sunny and isolated here in New Jersey too. Oh yeah, well it's in New York where we were just kind of in a box and we couldn't leave the house. So it's nice to be able to at least breathe air <laughs> outside. Sure. Um, so what have you been up to in this crazy quarantine world? Well, uh, it's interesting. So when it all started, um, I uh, had I actually had started to do a show called Foundation. Uh, it's Apple's big epic series um, by Isaac Asimov with this massive cast and being filmed all over the world, Iceland and Berlin. And so I was in uh, Ireland for about 10 days. And we were supposed to go back I was supposed to go back to Ireland and back to Malta and that and a show that I was supposed to do in New York for a day and a movie I'm supposed to do in Florida. Everything first was like, put a pin in that. Then it's like, we're stopping until we know what we can do. So um, it was all very abrupt, which is unfortunate. But um, I've, I, I have always sort of done other things um, to keep myself entertained between gigs, um, sometimes to earn money sometimes just for artistic, uh, creative, um, you know, juju, I, I need that, right? So I have to, I, I, I'm a creative as much as I'm an actor. Um, and I, I think that uh, I, I don't, I, I'm even less than looking for things, I find I'm, I'm constantly generating other things to do and, and projects and um, some is only tangentially acty and some is full on. Um, so that's, uh, I'm busy. I, I, that's good and I and and I'm okay we're good that's really good you know I think the fact that so many people are dealing with the same thing it's a worldwide pandemic so everyone who's been a creator is really kind of full stop I mean every industry is full stop but yeah I mean the big alone. difference is to be honest I mean you're young but there was a big strike not that long ago mm -hmm. where I had no way of working um mm -hmm. you know and and so other industries are feeling what, what actors and other creatives in our industry have felt before. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, the, the, there are a few differences, of course. Uh, there's the future to consider. Um, my industry is going to be fine. There was a CBS report just this past Sunday. I watched CBS Sunday morning, and in the report, they uh, spoke to the head of um, Netflix content, and they have content that they can be rolling out to the end of 2021. Mm -hmm. You have more subscribers than ever before. They're airing stuff that costs them nothing because they already own it for the most part with very little residual base that they have to consider. And so the industry itself and the people who are, will make money at the top of the food chain is sort of how CBS described it, are not only fine, but are having, in some ways, it, it's, you know, can't make new stuff, make money with old stuff. They're, so they're fine. Um, I posted on Facebook, it'd be really nice if they let that trickle down and they we reviewed the structure of residuals and, and, other, and maybe they gave to the Actors Fund or whatever the other unions funds have to help those who are struggling and not so fortunate. But that said, the industry is gonna be fine. So all of these studios, it, it's a wash for them. The people who are really struggling are the creatives, right? People like me, these you know, mid-level actors, um, writers, directors, crew members, wardrobe designers, makeup artists, hair people. Yeah. Uh, we're so, um, um, so the industry will be fine. Um, I will be fine. I have some actor friends who will be less fine. Um, uh, everything's relative. Uh, if we're in certain parts of the world, um, my worst case scenario is what they would pray for. So I have no complaints. You know, you made so many good points. The entertainment industry as a whole will be fine. We've dealt with this so many times. The writer strike happened, the union strike. There's been so many last couple of years that, you know, running parallels to other industries, they're, they're feeling it now. We're normally on pause or we're normally like waiting on the next thing or the permission for someone to tell us, oh, we can do stuff now. So many actors are, and not only actors, but creatives, writers, directors, everyone is feeling kind of the pressure. They're feeling anxious. They don't know when their next job's going to happen. But 
you've been able to kind of grow from that by creating your own stuff and making your own pathway to success. What um, other things have you been working on? So uh, it's interesting. You know, I, I think that every actor, every, every, every person, right, has a different way of coping. Um, my way of coping is um, to just keep moving, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, just keep swimming. Just, like, that's really me. Uh, my wife can attest to that, that um, my brain doesn't stop. And um, so some of the other things I'm doing, there's going to actually be a new um, screening app called Screen Hits TV uh, that I've been asked to come in and consult with uh, that will be launching at the end, I think just in the UK at first, at the end of this month. So I've been working with them as a creative consultant. Uh, I've worked on a couple of websites as a creative consultant because there's content component. So we're in pre-production. One of the, uh, I'm working for a nonprofit, but one of the projects we're doing is, um, is has got a video element to it. So we're in some pre-production for that. Uh, finishing the deck. I'm finishing the deck on a massive thing on the development side um, that, uh, you know, we, actually, this is great time for us not to worry about having to um, to pitch it to anybody because there's nobody to pitch it to. So we can get our, our ducks in a row. Um, you know, there's no income from that. There's some income from the consulting work. Um, there's unemployment income. There's some residual income. So, you know, I'm piecing together things for now and for the future. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also, I, I wrote something 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, a, a web series, um, very short little episodes. Altogether, all eight of them is it's maybe an hour. Um, but we're going to do a table read uh, on Zoom. Um, another friend of mine who works for Deutsch Advertising. We're going to try to beta test a platform um, and with a business model of creating Zoom reading, like a Zoom reading platform. So we would do the casting and the producing and the sound engineering and the sharing um, and make it look nice for packaging for people, for new creatives, but also, you know, just testing out material. So it could be used for anything you wanted. So we're going to test it out with this. And the cast I got is sick. I think I shared it with you earlier. I'm not going to share it here because it's, I can't yet, but it's um, secret for, it's secret for now, but we're going to be it, on the edge of our seats. But it's, I mean, <laughs> So my wife actually said, everybody loves Jeffrey. I don't know that that's true, but I can <laughs> say that, that when I shared this with a uh, casting director friend of mine, um, who I'm now forcing to be in it, she's, she's <laughs> like, holy shit, because I have, I have some A-listers on my, on my roster. We just said yes because that's we all want to do stuff. I mean, that's the other part, right? All actors, we want to act if we have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they all said yes makes me think, oh, maybe I can write a little bit. Maybe yeah. I don't suck as a writer. <laughs> right? It's definitely validation. It was real fine. validation. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, 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 yeah. I think as as actors, right? We love we love performing. We love being a part of the text we love expressing ourselves to the the medium of acting but we're also multifaceted creative individuals and i think that right now we're given this time you know to really invest in ourselves and invest in our creative opportunities i think what you're doing right now even um, on a much larger scale than some people that don't have necessarily the same resources or the same friends um that they can invest in themselves right now i think a lot of people i see they're like i don't know what my next job's going to be i don't know what's going to happen where people are going to see me i'm like you are your your instrument of a skill like you have the ability to write something and, and put it out there and create and utilize a platform like zoom or Streamyard. Or right anything. i mean look you know to, uh, to my point earlier you know we all have different coping mechanisms and i think it's mm -hmm. unfair to assume that everybody has the same talent the same mm -hmm. the same um motivation uh, who has the same resources or the same, you know, mental state to, to do things. I, I don't think coping with this time is really an, in, an individuated experience. And I would, I would hate to, to advise anybody, if I can do it, you can do it, right? Mm -hmm. Part of me thinks that, but I wouldn't, you, you can't really say that because that's not always true. 
right? Um, mm-hmm. I just, I just have, this is how I am in the world. And, and, and some of it is being generated by me. Some of it's being like this. I did a, a play reading right before we started this, a, a, not a tape, a play reading, a reading of a, a script. One of the, one of the jobs I was supposed to do that got canceled, you know, so that's, I didn't generate that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so some of it is, is old projects, but I, I do think that, you know, you're talking about performance for me as an actor, performance is never really the primary thing about it that I love in the first place. Right. So if, if you're, if singing out loud to an audience is what gives you your thing, then you could sing out loud and create a zoom concert. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got to, I think what it, this is an opportunity for people to sort of figure out how you're going to cope. You can't rely on other people. You can't, you can collaborate, but you got to figure out for yourself. And that might mean you give this up for a minute and you go garden, but that might mean you take 10 mile walks or that might mean you build a roof. You know, um, one of my, one of my actor friends, he's, he's been doing really, really well, doesn't really need the income, but he has been using this time to do home building for himself because that's what he loves to do with his time when he's not acting. So the, there's, there's a, there is a bit of pressure, especially in New York City, mm-hmm. t- for people to say to themselves or their friends are saying like, well, this is the time to write the novel or this is the time <laughs> to, this is the time to get six pack abs or, you know, this is the time to learn how to play violin or speak Chinese. It's like, or not, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, I, I thought I was going to be reading all these books. A friend of mine's a writer and I'm like, I, I went like, I like all of his books. I haven't, I haven't read a book. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't even picked one up because I'm too busy with all my other stuff, right? Because that I created for myself, so. Well, I, I think, you know, this whole thing, there is the pressure. Like I was gifted a whole, someone I met at an event who was so taken back when I said they gifted me a whole uh, all access class, the master class. I was like, yes, I'm gonna take every master class. I haven't done a single thing. I think that you're right, the pressure is really there that if you need to take this time to kind of, a lot of my, my, um, my friends that have worked nonstop, they're using this time to just pause because sometimes that's what you need. Yeah. I think the one important lesson I have learned from this experience is that it's a great time to connect to commu- your community. You know, I, you said a very important point. Well, not everyone has the same moxie or, or resources or things like that. But one thing we all can connect to right now is community. The way that you're feeling right now that emotion is being felt by someone else. You can find right. someone that you connect to on the same level. And, you know, whether your talents are like, I've, I've been very fortunate um, with my, my business, I've made a business aside from, of course, performing and produce. And I've had this time to really connect and just make fun stuff versus the pressure of, of doing it for work. And, and it's been able to be saying, okay, well, I can't write, but I know someone who can, and I'm going to find, listen to them and hear from them and we can help each other or, or someone who wants to, create the next best thing or someone who just wants a group of people to talk to on a Tuesday night at two o'clock and you can just find that I think community is the one kind of breathing uh, ability ability to breathe that I've really found throughout this whole well experience. you know th- there was all this chatter before COVID about the the problems with social media and, mm-hmm. and Facebook and Instagram and I think we're seeing now, like everything else, nothing is binary, right? So like everything else, there are pros and cons. And so Facebook and Zoom and Instagram and, and social media in general have, have done precisely what the best promise of these um, platforms always has been, and that is connecting. And people are connecting in ways they haven't before. I mean, my wife teases me because I'm actually talking to some people who I would have needed this kind of platform to talk to. In the, like people, my friends in England. So I'm having conversations mm-hmm. with friends in England. So I had an hour long conversation with a friend of mine who I went to drama school with, who I haven't spoken to in years. Um, we sort of saw each other on Facebook. We said, hi, you want to chat? So next thing we know, we're talking. Well, why didn't I do that before this? So to, to make, you know, to your point, this is, this is a time of, of reconsidering what connection is, who you want to be connected mm-hmm. to. You know, there's some things that also won't be discussed that aren't going to be part, you know, when you're, when you're at home with your family, you know, 
just trying to find some some stability, some day to day structure, is is its own challenge, right? Yeah, I don't always want to talk about stuff. I just want to do like do yard work, walk the dog, right? You know, and just make sure that you're doing all those things that you also have to do. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, it's funny, like walking the dog and even doing things around the house before they were like a chore. It's like there's small things that make me feel like almost relevant after all this like dispersity, right? So, you know, you and I have unique experience of dealing with Passover in the moment of quarantine. And um, that was a unique experience for me because I had to Zoom with my parents and I was at my friend's house who isn't Jewish and I had to make stuff cabbage on her. So, and that's this whole thing, but like being able to connect and just talk to family that we, that wouldn't have come to the Seder anyway, but you have this great new. Had the stuffed medium. cabbage, had the stuffed cabbage come out. I make really good stuffed cabbage. I just, I, she didn't have a pot, so I had to buy her a pot. I had to find a pot that like I could buy, get us at a store. Which I find. It was hilarious, but you know, like that's my one way of, of doing something for the holidays. And it made me feel like I was with my parents, even though I couldn't be with them. Um, but also share it. I had this whole like spread and then my friend in the corner and I made like makeshift latkes and things like that. And awesome. you know, but it was, it was cool because I had different relatives on, on Zoom with us that I hadn't seen. We had a cousin I hadn't seen in years who just came on because his dad sent the link. So we all were able to be together, you know, and it's, it's great to kind of take the moment to say, hey, you know, I miss, I miss you or I want to hear what's going on with you. Um, I'm going to ask you, like we're, we're starting over because I feel so rude I never asked you this before. Um, but what inspired you to be an actor? Oh my God. I know. It's a wow. Um, I know. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've done some of these before. So I, I would like to say that I could shorten the story. So growing up in a Jewish the story. <laughs> growing up in a Jewish household in, in Northern New Jersey, my parents, you know, they were acculturated and my dad's a doctor, still practicing. My mom is involved in the Jewish community. Uh, they were raised by people, um, not rich, but of means. I mean, you know, g going to the theater. Or, oh, my mom was a, an artist. My dad could play every instrument, still does. My dad did some theater. They would see Broadway. So back then, you know, broad a Broadway show was $15. So you didn't need to be rich to see theater. That was not the bailiwick of the rich the way it is now. Um, but they were, you know, well-educated, erudite, well-read individuals. And so listening to music, singing around the piano, doing concert choir and the choirs in school, you know, so I was doing something in that universe. Um, when I was in grade school, I got bullied a lot um, and I did a play. Uh, how old was I? No, it was actually be, even before that. So I did, I did as a choir member, I got to do plays at, like I did two plays at the high school when I was in choir because I could sing. And then, um, but then I did a play in my grade school. I guess I was in sixth, seventh grade. And I did a play called David and Lisa. And I was, as I said, I was getting bullied and picked on by, by, the, by the, the jocks and whoever. And one of the kids who had picked on me, uh, whose name I remember, but I will not share, um, came up to me after the show and apologized for picking on me. Oh, wow. And being an actor is a great place for misfits, to be honest, because anybody can do it, right? Mm -hmm. We can argue and debate what that means when I say anybody can do it. But the short version is you don't need to be good looking or bad looking or tall or fat or short or skinny or doesn't matter. It's about your brain and about your ability to express yourself, your willingness to do the work. And so it was a great leveler level playing field, right? You didn't have to be faster than anybody. You didn't, none of that mattered. And so for me, it became a very safe place, but also it became a place where every aspect of me was engaged. So my intellect, my emotions, my physicality, right? My, my curiosity, every part of me, it's a great place for a geek because it takes a real um, effort to do the investigative, the investigative work that, that being an actor requires. I don't know if I was aware of it when I was in fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth grade, but I, I, that's what, what drew me to it. Um, and um, 
So I started doing grade school. I did it in high school and did it in community theater, but I was still going to be a, a lawyer because I'm a nice Jewish guy from Northern New Jersey. And then <laughs> when I was at Amherst, I did West Side Story and the head of the drama department at Smith saw me in it. I played action. And he sent me a multi-page handwritten note about my work and expressed things about what I was doing that even I could not have articulated. And that combined with the fact that there was no pre-law at Amherst, like that wasn't a major. So it didn't really matter what you majored in, you're gonna major in one of the humanities. And so I decided to become a drama major. And then I did summer stock. And then I went to the Jim O'Neill Theater Center and had this really intense experience and worked with Mars Karnofsky. And so everything that I did sort of kept buttressing. I wasn't the major actor, I wasn't the biggest actor at Amherst by any means. Um, John Michael Higgins actually was would have been the, the biggest star. I, I think actually there's some other very famous people from Amherst. Um, but I loved it and, and, and realized, as I said, that it's the only thing that engages every aspect of me as a human. Um, and once you have that, nothing else really compares. So um, I think I would have been a great lawyer. I think I'm a really good doctor, but I'm not really interested in spending my time not being fully engaged all the time. So I made the decision and then went to England to go to drama school at the, um, what is now the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama and got a job for TV on TV, uh, the night network right out of school. Then came back to the States, couldn't get work because I had this Jew fro and nobody was really interested in what I had to offer. Um, and, and so I did some set construction, then I was a social worker, then I started doing theater, and then worked my way to where I am now. That's awesome. That's the story. And I love you go to story. IMDb, you can see everything <laughs> see I've done. The whole thing. <laughs> you can see all the TV and film dating all the way back to 1987. Awesome. 1987. I feel like I want to get all like Talmudic now. <laughs> 1987 is so old. Talmudic? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, no, go ahead. Um, so, I'm so old or because I have a beard? No, but. no, 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 no. It's because, you know, I grew up in a nice Jewish home. Right. <laughs> I grew up in a nice Jewish home. And I, I've always said that um, my Judaism has been a huge, like, beacon in, what, in my career as a creator. My, uh, and, Absolutely. Um, like, one, one of the things that really kept me going, I was in a Russian Jewish theater company and I got to perform in Russia. And, and like that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have that cultural right. uh, backbone. How has, or how do you think and feel that your cultural background, not even so much the religious aspect. Well, of it, I, here, I, 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 I've spoken about this. It's interesting. I think it's a really good question. I, part of it is for me that our culture, my experience of our culture promotes thought and discussion and analysis and deep dives into language. It also supports and promotes, certainly in America, uh, but also in other countries, the arts, right? I mean, we are the patrons of the arts. We are artists. We are both. Mm -hmm. and, and the value of art here, it's a little more complicated because my son, the doctor, not my son, the actor, and also there is real, I mean, the, the primary supporters of, of art in the United States from, private, from the private sector, a lot of them are disproportionately Jewish. And, um, and so there's a, this appreciation for, for things that are artistic, that are thought involved. Um, again, it's disproportionate in our culture compared to other cultures, I would say. Uh, I'm not, it's not better or worse, it's just that's us. Right. Makes sense. So, mm -hmm. so every, I mean, I, my first Broadway show, I, I think I was in fourth grade. I saw Fiddler on the Roof, <laughs> you know, that was my first Broadway show. Right. Mm -hmm. But we were singing, I knew Broadway shows by heart when I was in second grade. I knew all of West Side Story by heart when I was in second grade. Cause that's what my parents were playing mm -hmm. on the record player. So, you know, that and the mamas and the papas. <laughs> yes. um, you know, so, so I, I think, I think that being an actor, I can't speak about the other arts. So I'm not, this is not a only acting, not other arts or mm -hmm. only acting, not other enterprises. But for me, being an actor is completely supported by 
who I am as a Jewish man, um, who I am as a Jewish person in the world. Um, I think that my own curiosity is echoed in the curiosity of scholars and in, in students of the Torah um, and in people discussing the nature of, of anything because that curiosity is, is inherent to even how you would study, even the ultra-Orthodox who study Torah, the Talmudic, right? They have to talk about it with each other. They're arguing with each other and they're looking at tractates and language from rabbis dating back thousands of years who are arguing with each other about what something means. Well, that's, that's script work. Yep. So that's, that's why. Plus, there's, I've had a couple of projects where I've actually, I mean, I, I was the artistic director for a, an acting program for young people called Arts Fest for a few years with the Jewish, um, the JCC Association. Mm -hmm. So for a few years, I was the guy and I helped put this thing together for three years in a row. Um, this thing to Ola Me, which is uh, for more um, observant uh, young Jewish people. Um, I did a project with them uh, last year. We were supposed to be in Brazil this year. Didn't happen, of course. Um, so 2020. <laughs> yeah, but those were just job related. That's that. That's mm -hmm. I don't think that was really what the question was, but there you go. No, it makes total sense. I mean, for me, it's definitely, you know, we're speaking from, you know, similarities. It's just it's a big we're a big storytelling culture that it to me. I feel like it's made me very much love the craft, as they say. Um, but yeah, you know, I I'm, your story is so interesting to me. I'm so surprised we've never talked about your <laughs> Well, because because we only catch each other when we're at some sort of little, you know, like little co comic convention or, or, or yeah, little convention. So big yeah, I know I could ask you about all these lovely fandom questions, but I really think right now what people really need is more about inspiration to to not honestly like to feel, but inspiration to just do what makes them happy and do well, what they're passionate. It's challenging, you know, it's yeah. really challenging. So one one argument or one discussion that is pretty consistent is, right, even when they're talking about opening up, right, so you're going to open up a mm -hmm. city or you're going to open up a state, the balance, and, and I'm not saying anybody's making any good decisions right now because I don't really know that they are because I don't have enough data and I'm not an expert. Yeah. I just play one on TV. So um, <laughs> I, I think some of the problems that, that exist in finding where do you open up versus what's healthy I think the same question is what, like if, if you have no income and you have no access to money and no access to food, you're going to have a very different experience than somebody like me. Mm -hmm. It's a luxury to be able to have this discussion with you. Yep. It's a luxury to be able to do the projects I'm doing. And I'm, I'm, I appreciate that more than I appreciate that. I don't feel guilty. That no one's telling me what to do. No one's giving me anything. I am appreciative though, that I have a brain that allows me to do it, that I have the wherewithal. And I'm not, again, I mean, I'm getting unemployment. I'm not living on, on any massive mound of money that I got because I was the lead in the TV show and had, had points. You know, I don't have that. I've never lived that way. Um, but I am just really, really fortunate that I'm not worried. If I were worried about how I'm gonna put food on my table, this would be a very different discussion. I don't know that I'd be having a discussion with you in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, so back to what I had said earlier, we all have different coping mechanisms, but we also have very different, we're having very different actual experiences. Somebody said, we're all in the same boat. And then somebody very wisely said, no, mm -hmm. we all have different kinds of boats. We're all in the same storm. Some of us mm -hmm. are in a cove on a yacht. Some of us are in a cove in a rowboat. Some of us are in a yacht, but in the middle of the ocean. Like, you know, you can be really, really rich. Somebody might die of COVID, you know? And, mm -hmm. and like, I am no one to judge the experience that this has um, created for, for anyone because it's all, as I said, very individual. And, mm -hmm. and I would be loath to weigh in uh, and say, this is how you should do it. I think what you need to do is, is take enough time and headspace to, to figure it out for yourself um, and not be careless. 
because if you die, you're dead, mm -hmm. right? So that's the baseline. <laughs> so the first thing is don't die. Now, not eating is another way you, that, like, you, that. you need to eat. You're going to have to <laughs> weigh if you're at that level, how mm -hmm. can I generate income so that I can feed myself and or my family and still stay safe, right? Mm -hmm. so everyone's going to be weighing that. Right. It, it, the, the, I'm not in a position where I need to take tremendous risks. I'm not going to, you know, mm -hmm. at some point, you know, my wife and I, when this first started, I'm like, I, I don't know. But the only way I can bring food into this house is to go and, and, and go into shop, right? Then we're going to shop, right? Shop right now delivers. Okay. Is my broccoli not going to be the one I would have picked out? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but that's not a, a, that's not an actual problem. That's the happy problem. The happy yeah. It's not a real problem. Yeah. A fake problem. So, but that's about perspective, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. all about perspective. And I'm just, I just, I know how fortunate I am. Yeah, I think that, you know, celebrating what, we, what you've been able to provide and, and what you've been able to do is so important right now. And also just talking to people. I like, I'm so grateful to be able to talk to you because I look to you as someone that inspires me and being able to in this situation, um, in this situation to be able to like just connect to the people that you're inspired by. I think it's important to really kind of saying the fact that we're all human and we're all going through this and we're all going through it at different levels. But at the end of the day, you know, it's about staying alive and, and doing what you need, what you have to do and what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, happy. like, like there's the, the Eastern thought and Eastern thought, right. Mm -hmm. Taking care of yourself is self care is vital more than it is in Western thought. Western thought, there's this weird sense that, no, no, it's all about the other person. Well, that's, it's like the airplane thing, right? When, when the oxygen goes and the mask comes down, you put it over your face first because you can't help that person if you don't. I think right now we're in a plane with no oxygen. Mm -hmm. And if a mask comes down, you got to put it on your face first, <laughs> right? So I think, I think self-care, not at the, not the expense of others, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that. That's not self-care. That's selfishness and narcissism. But self-care, mm -hmm. when it's not at the expense of others, is vital to you being able to offer others help, support, or insight. If you can't figure your own shit out, you cannot give advice. If you can't you. earn income, you can't help somebody else earn income. If you can't put food on your table, you can't find how somebody else can put food on their table. And so I think this is a time of real... Of real um, consolidating priorities and, and um, also not being judgmental. Yeah. 1, except, for people who, except for people who refuse to take any precautions at all. I'm not <laughs> yes. really interested in them. No, I think that's a fair statement. I will judge all the people that don't walk outside with their masks and their gloves on. Yeah, well, um, look, look, I mean, the truth about masks, mm -hmm. from what I understand is, if you're outside and there's nobody around you, there's no reason mm -hmm. to wear a mask. If you're outside mm -hmm. and you have the risk of being around people within the six foot radius, you should have your mask on. Done. Exactly. It's that simple. Have a mask with you. Don't be stupid. Don't lick your hands. <laughs> Don't touch other people's faces. This is easy stuff. Don't, Don't lick your hands, then also groups. touch people's faces. <laughs> right. Don't gather in groups in the Ozarks or in, you know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's my. Well, those, well I like those. They're all really good, important pieces of advice to dealing with, you know, quarantine um but before i get all the lovely little tidbits of all the exciting things you're working on and where they can find you what is the best piece of advice you've ever received about well, anything about anything you want to so the share. best fee the I, I would say the one i've repeated the most is from my grandfather colonel millenthal my mother's father was a colonel in world war ii but he had enlisted in world war one and he was that guy so not college educated, not high school educated, a self-made person, um, did well in the commodity exchange, but he enlisted in World War I, sold um, insurance on the mall where they were all bivouacked, went over to, to Europe, went over to France, came back, then was in World War II as a colonel. Didn't, it didn't start as a colonel. But he was the highest, I think the highest ranking Jewish officer in the army at the time. And he was a great guy. Old school. Steak and potatoes, old school. Um, but a great guy. And I remember him saying to me once that if somebody offers you an opportunity or asks you to do something, say yes 
and then figure it out. Really I think that I think that I think that actually is I, I heard that so early. I think that's exactly how I live my life. And that's a really good piece of advice. It's a good way to go about doing things. For well, me, it works no, for me. I, I love it. I love it. I'm going to, you know, I can't say that I don't practice my own version of that. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, I am so grateful for you to do this. Oh, it's a today. pleasure. It's a this pleasure. is fun. Next time we'll talk about, you know, all the save Daredevil stuff. But for now, <laughs> sure. uh, what do you have going on coming up soon, aside from your awesome reading that we can't talk about? Right. And where can people find you? So, um, I think there's a movie coming out called um, Black Jack, the story of Jackie Ryan is I think going to be coming out soon. I played Peter Vesey, the newspaper reporter. It's a true story. Um, so there's that. Uh, you can find me on Facebook as on my fan page, Jeffrey Cantor. Uh, Jeffrey Mr. With a G. Jeffrey the G. Mr. G Cantor on Instagram, Jeff Cantor on Twitter. I'm also on LinkedIn, but that's really for my non-acting stuff. Um, and uh, I don't think I have anything else that will be public because the other stuff I was doing was, was caught in the middle. I mean, there's two little, sh there's a Carl Manhair Postal Inspector, mm -hmm. Carl with a K, Manhair Postal Inspector. You can find him online at carlmanhairpostalinspector.com. That's just been relaunched. Um, uh, Hail Caesar, I just saw is back on Netflix. Yeah. And so is Public Enemies. So um, I have a, a parts in those two movies. Um, you can still watch Daredevil, of course, all three seasons and The Punisher. Um, uh, I, there, yeah, there were two short films, but I don't know what's gonna happen with those. Um, and, I, and The Resident, I was in you know, last season, so you can catch a little bit of what that was. Uh, Zip the Tournay was the character. Uh, <laughs> But um, that's, that's, you know, that's in reruns now. So, um, yeah, so the only new thing I think that's coming out will be the, the Jackie Ryan movie, um, which got, has a pretty de decent cast. There's an Arquette in it, if that helps. Awesome. So. Awesome. All well, right. I like hearing how busy you are. And Thank I you. will definitely be binge watching all the stuff that I haven't already seen. Thank you. For, <laughs> hey, look, they go on, if you want to go into IMDb, you can see everything I've ever been in. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're that nice interested list. in what Jeffrey Cantor with Jeffrey the G, Cantor with the C is doing, go to IMDb. And you can also visit my website at jeffreycantor.com. Yeah. Well, I will put all the information below. And thank you so much, Jeff. I really appreciate it. My and pleasure. hopefully we could do more cool stuff like this yeah. in quarantine. Yeah, be safe and smart. Don't touch faces. Yes, don't lick your hand and then touch don't faces. Don't lick your hand either. and touch faces. That's bad. <laughs> cool. Bye. Bye.